Friends, hello, welcome back to my channel. I am Mike Herring. Let's jump in today's video. So you'll have to excuse my obvious exhaustion. It is 7, 10 p.m. It's July 15th. I got home from work not very long ago. Um, I am tired, but I really wanted to get this video out uh, just because the first phase one clinical trial of the COVID vaccine came out, I think, yesterday. I had a little bit of time to skim through it today. I wanted to tell you And I wanted to let you know what it means for you, what it means for me, what it means for the future of a potential COVID vaccine, what's in the paper, what actually matters, and how it should affect you, if at all. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So first things first, this was a phase one clinical trial of this particular vaccine. Before it can be released to the public, there needs to be at least three phases. And even after it's released to the public, there's usually a fourth phase. There is only one goal in a phase one trial, and that is the safety of the vaccine. Are there serious side effects of the vaccine, and is the dose of the vaccine important in bringing about side effects? An ancillary test in phase one clinical trials is, does the vaccine actually work? Which I would argue is pretty important, right? <laughs> so phase one clinical trials usually recruit somewhere between 20 and 100 otherwise healthy volunteers to get the vaccine at some predetermined protocol at some predetermined dose. These volunteers are usually followed for a period of time, usually months or years. The data are collected, the data get published, and then they go to the FDA saying, hey, look at our data, can we go to phase two? Phase two, a little bit different, more of the same. In phase two, they're still testing, hey, is it safe? And hey, does it work? This time, they're going to several hundred volunteers. Again, nobody's forcing anybody to take this vaccine if they don't want to. They're otherwise healthy volunteers, typically in phase one, maybe less so in phase two, but hundreds and hundreds of volunteers to try this out. They typically look at two major things. Is the vaccine safe? What are the short-term effects? What are the side effects of the vaccine? Is it harming people? Is it gonna harm more people than it's actually gonna help? And how did the volunteers' immune systems actually respond to this vaccine? You know, are they getting a shot that's supposed to be a vaccine and then nothing actually happens? Or are they mounting some sort of defense to whatever it is they're being vaccinated from? That's phase two. Get the results, they look positive, you move on to phase three. Phase three, you're looking at thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of volunteers to get the vaccine. What does it look at? Again, first thing, safety. Even though there may be hundreds of thousands of people enrolled in this particular study, it's still being done in a controlled fashion. But they're also looking at how do the people that get the vaccine compare to the people that don't get the vaccine? Does the vaccine actually work in these larger populations? Do people have adverse effects from the vaccine that the people that didn't get the vaccine don't get? What are the most common side effects of this vaccine? Is it going to be safe to give out to the population? That's what phase three is for. So phase one, very small, 20 to 100 people. Is it safe? Does it work? Phase two, a little bit bigger couple hundred people, is it safe, does it work? Phase three, a lot more people, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, is it safe, does it work, is there gonna be a benefit to getting the vaccine, what are the most common side effects? And then we move to give it to everybody. Now, phase four is of course after it's already been released to the public, and that's usually if there are other questions that need to be answered. The FDA will not license a vaccine to the public unless has been shown to be safe, effective, and the benefits of the vaccine outweigh the risks of the vaccine. So, this paper, where does it leave us for COVID? Well, I'm gonna thumb through it right in front of you, really. Uh, I've read it a couple times. I have a pretty good handle on what happened in this study, but sometimes I'm gonna need a refresher. It's been a long day. I believe it was released yesterday on the 14th. Um, I'm going to give you the long and the short of it. There's a lot of stuff in there that a lot of people don't really need to know. Um, and frankly, I'll probably fall asleep from boredom. I can't imagine what you guys are feeling right now. But here's the important parts. This was a phase one clinical trial. Like I said before, not a lot of people. Is it safe? Is it effective? So first of all, the study design. They were given two vaccines at three different doses. There was one group that was a 25 microgram dose, one group that was a 100 microgram dose, and one group that was a 250 microgram dose. They received these vaccinations 
on day one and day 29, so 28 days apart. And what they did was they looked at the immune response as well as the side effect profile, how severe the side effects were, was there any difference in between groups of the side effects, first vaccination versus second vaccination. So let's talk about the adverse events first. Is it safe? Well, first things first, the vaccine didn't kill anybody. That's always a good thing. Secondly, the higher dose of the three vaccine doses caused more what they called severe adverse events. Now, a severe adverse event, as they described it, was something to get in the way of everyday life. The most common things were things like fatigue, myalgias, and pain at the injection site. Which is kind of what happens after you get a flu shot and how you know that your body is actually, you know, doing what it's supposed to be doing. But anyway, most common after the second dose of the largest, the 250 microgram dose of the vaccine. All right, now, and probably what you're most interested in, does it work? So even after the first dose, there was an immune response. However, they tested pseudovirus neutralizing activity, not the actual virus, but a fake version of the virus. And it wasn't super high two weeks before the second dose. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means that you probably need the two doses, probably a month apart. I imagine they're going to try different dosages, different amounts of time between the two different shots. It seems like somewhere between two and four weeks would be a good idea. Um, but what they've also done is they've shown that it kind of looks like the same responses after two shots that you get for things like the flu shot. So what does it mean? It means that it's actually starting to look pretty good as far as the vaccine goes. Now, I'm not going to be giving this vaccine to my parents anytime soon. I'm not gonna take this vaccine anytime soon. There were 45 people in this particular study. You can't generalize that to the entire population. You can't generalize that to every population that has a particular disease or a particular age or a particular race or a particular anything. You can't generalize this at all. All it tells us is this vaccine was largely safe for the 45 people that took the two doses. So the long and the short of it, what does this actually mean? Well, two things really. One, it has a similar side effect profile to things like a flu shot. Some people are going to feel tired the next day. Some people are going to get shoulder pain when they get the shot. Some people are going to feel really tired. Some people might get body aches. Some people will be just fine. You never know how you're going to react to a vaccine until you get it, really. But it looks like there's no real serious life-threatening events that happen with this particular vaccine in this 45 patient trial. Now, full disclosure only 42 people got the second vaccination. That's because three of the people in the higher dose group, the 250 microgram group, were actually quarantined because they thought they got COVID. While they were quarantined, they missed their window of getting the second shot. As it turns out, none of them actually had COVID, so who knows? For what it's worth, only 42 people got the second shot. But like I said, this is something that we cannot generalize to the public. These were already healthy people. They did not have diseases. They were not particularly old. I think the oldest patient was 55. The youngest patient was 18. You can't generalize this to children just yet. There needs to be larger studies so we can see how it affects different people. So is it safe? Seems like it. More studies are needed. Two, does it work? It seems to. It seems to work in the two-dose fashion we have now. It would be lovely if we just get the one shot and we'd be good to go not how this is looking like it's gonna work. So what's next? Well, phase two. Phase two is next. Like I've been harping on for the last half of this video, we need more people. We need different people. We need older people. We need younger people. We need sicker people. We need healthier people. We need more people. Phase one clinical trials are kind of like putting your feet in the water. It's time to get up to our waist. Now I should mention that all these vaccine trials are being fast-tracked. What they got done in two months, it usually takes like two years. So they're on the fast track. It looks like the data are solid. I don't have access to the raw data. There are some appendices online that I've looked through. Everything seems to have been done properly. Everything seems to have been reported accurately, but it seems like we just need more people, more time, and more studying of this particular vaccine. Uh, I have heard rumors that phase two and phase three are gonna kind of be blended. Um, you know, phase two and phase three are 
Uh, kind of the same thing, just with different numbers of people. Um, I don't know that I love the idea, but I don't have any visceral reactions against the idea, as long as it's being followed very, very carefully. You know, we don't know how this is going to affect people like me with diabetes, or, you know, if you have a rheumatological disorder, or cancer, or something. Uh, we don't know that, so we're going to have to pay very, very close attention to these people, and all people, frankly. We're going to have to pay very, very close attention to the people doing the studies, and the vaccines, and making sure none of the big pharma companies are fudging some data. But with any luck, some of these things get fast-tracked, we kind of blow through some of the red tape a little bit, uh, we... <laughs> We churn faster the uh, the gears of bureaucracy, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we take one step at a time. So, there, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will link the paper in the description box below here. Um, I will do my best to stay on top of all COVID news, especially in the medical literature as best I can. This is where the real data are. Um, you know, sometimes the news does really well to get this information to the public. Sometimes the ideas are a little bit misconstrued. Uh, sometimes the implications thereof are a little bit misguided. Uh, not always. Sometimes they do a really good job. Um, but sometimes it takes a medical professional like, you know, me and all my colleagues here on YouTube and the hospital and everywhere else to kind of break it down. So that's my assessment of this particular phase one clinical trial. I'm cautiously optimistic. We'll see how it goes. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, please consider subscribing, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.